Good morning. Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone to worship, all of you who are here in person and those watching online. I'm very thankful that you're all here. I'm Pastor Maggie, and I'm grateful to be worshiping with all of you today. I invite you all to settle in, to allow yourself a chance to breathe, and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from Psalm 111. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. The one who pardons and heals calls us to name our failings and our hopes. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy God, we come to you with open hearts. We seek to be transformed. We forget that you are always with us and that with you all things are possible. Forgive us, lead us, make us new. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. The God who made you and knows your every thought hears you now and forgives all your sin. You have been redeemed through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing our gathering hymn, My Life Flows On in Endless Song, number 763.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you command the universe and all that is made. Your word makes whole what is broken. It is the force of good and the food of peace. Teach us now as you taught in the synagogue. Heal us now so that in all that we say and do, the freedom we have in you may be for others too. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. The first reading comes from Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Please read responsively with me Psalm 111. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All your precepts are sure. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food and sacrifice to idols, we know that all us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does, yet, does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as the food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to the idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, 
you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able to welcome the gospel. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and children can come forward. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. Do you see what I have here? Something from Pokemon? Yeah, a stuffed animal. You're right. It does say Pokemon on the tag. Here, super good. Does he look happy? No, why not? Yeah, his eyes are closed. And what's, do you see what's around his belly? What's around his belly? Can you tell him? A rope, yeah. Would that be comfortable to have a rope tied around you? No. And do you think he knows that there's a rope on him? No, No, because he's sleeping. He doesn't know, but he's really, really uncomfortable. So sometimes we have to be able to tell other people what might be hurting them. And that's where Jesus comes in in our gospel today. He knows what is hurting us. And he helps maybe by working through other people by saying, I think you might have something that's bothering you today. Maybe something that happened at school, something that happened at home that maybe, you know, kind of made you feel like you were being pushed down or squished up or not so good. And when we know it, when we know what's happening to us, what do you think we can maybe take it off? If we know what's happening to us, we can release it, right? Now, do you think he's going to go right back to his super perfect form right away when I remove the rope? No. Do you think it'll take a little while? Yes, Yes, it'll take a little while to heal, but eventually he'll be able to feel a little bit better. I wish I could open his eyes for you. That'd be pretty cool, huh? (laughs) We'll pretend his eyes are open and he's smiling at you. So when we know what's weighing us down or when we know what's something that's really hard on us, if we talk about it with other people and we pray about it to God, do you think we'll get better? Yeah, might take a while, right? Okay, should we pray for that? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for naming what weighs us down. Thank you for helping us heal. Help us heal others and share your love. In Jesus we pray. Amen. That was a long prayer. You did really good. You can head back to your seats.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, free us from what binds us. Gather your spirit in this place. Open our hearts to transformation and grace that we may put all our hope in you. Amen. My granny, as most of you know, loves to wear hats. She has a hat for many different occasions, and she has many different hats, all of which are quite fantastic, I might add. My granny also loves to go on pontoon rides, and so a few years ago, for her birthday, we rented a pontoon boat, loaded it up with family, and headed out on the lake on a gorgeous summer day. For this occasion, my granny wore this hat, kind of rainbow-colored, large-brimmed hat. And she was enjoying her cruise around Lake Dubay when all of a sudden, the wind caught her hat just right, and it blew far off into the lake. Thankfully, the hat stayed afloat, as you can see, <laughs> until we came up to it bobbing in the water with, when Keenan, with his long arms, was able to fish it out. A once perfectly shaped hat now has waves that kind of ripple through it that are reminiscent of the water that once briefly held it. A serene moment had been dampened because of something out of our control. Such things happen from time to time, which remind us how little control we have, especially when such things happen in our most routine of places such as being in church on Sunday. Now, most of the time, we know what to expect. We open worship with scripture in silence, followed by confession and forgiveness, opening hymn and prayer, readings, the gospel. You get the picture. But sometimes we are caught off guard with something unexpected, maybe something from the children's sermon or an unexpected announcement. But for the most part, church is a safe space. We know what to expect, how the flow will go, and what we plan to do afterwards. And yet our gospel stands in stark contrast to this self-assurance. Our gospel paints a picture of people gathered in a church just like we are, when all of a sudden... What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? To which Jesus responds, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. No! As you can imagine, and as you experience today, this was unexpected. And it definitely disrupted the flow in the synagogue that day. This caused people to stir, to wonder, to fear, and to ask, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. An experience that doesn't fit with most of us today. Unless you find yourself watching one of the many horror films in the Exorcist franchise. And yet, this gospel can and does speak to us today. Because what happened in that synagogue that day, whether it be fact or story, is meant to reveal something to us about Jesus' ministry. Especially since this is the first act of Jesus' ministry in the Gospel of Mark. Because the first act of Jesus' ministry is indicative to the core theology of each gospel. The first act of Jesus' ministry sets the stage, if you will. It starts the sketch of who the author understands Jesus to be. And the, in the Gospel of Mark, this is not a healing or turning water into wine or a sermon. It is a full-blown exorcism. An exorcism that brings about the question, by whose authority is Jesus able to do this? And this questioning of authority will continue with us as we journey through the Gospel of Mark. And the question of authority will reveal who Jesus is. Of course, Jesus' authority will be found in a variety of things, 
such as teacher. But Mark's gospel is getting at something deeper because Jesus has the authority to free us. By Jesus casting out demons in the synagogue that day, we discover Jesus' purpose. Jesus has come to free us from what binds us. Jesus has come to transform our lives, which is why we gather in church today, not to experience what we think will happen, but to experience the living God, to be free of the heaviness of the world and the many things that bind us. And though the things that bind us today are not literal demons, we are still bound by many things that weigh us down. And we definitely experience things out of our control. And we are confronted by these things daily, from small and silly things, like the wind taking my granny's hat for a ride in the dip in the lake, to things that are desperately out of our control. Things that hurt us or change our lives completely. The things that rob us from the fullness of life things that destroy your ability to thrive and flourish, which in turn impacts your relationships, relationships with yourself, with God, with others, which can lead to self-doubt or despair or even hatred. Because if you let these things go for too long, you will get used to the heaviness until little by little you are overcome by them robbing you from who God created you to be. And instead of living life fully, you may find yourself consumed with grudges or overcome with sadness or lost in numbness. When wounds pile on top of one another, air cannot get at them, which stifles the healing process. And it is in those moments I have found that I need God the most. You need Jesus to name what you have been carrying, calling it out from deep within, letting it take flight in the wind, letting it float on the surface. So you can take a good, hard look at it and decide if you want to scoop it up and put it on, or if you are truly ready to let it sink down into the depths releasing it to God. This is hard work, but this is work we can do together with God because this work will leave you changed and transformed. Maybe you will feel a bit soggy at first, but eventually the ripples will get ironed out or maybe you'll decide to put a few more in, which we can only do when we are open to the movement of the Spirit, when we take caution and throw it to the wind, allowing our time together as church to not be a place of simply going through the motions, but a place of transformation and life, especially since so much of what we experience is beyond our control. Our days are filled with things that overcome us, and with things we really don't want. But there is one God who wants all of you, who feels deeply and knows the pain and heaviness that binds you, who is there to hold you, to call it out and name it, so you can be set free. Which is why Christ came in the first place, to free us, from all that binds us, even the chains of death. In Christ, all of creation is set free, free to be who God created you to be, and with the fullness of life God desires for you. May you find this freedom today and all days. May you find God's transformation and healing, especially when you need it the most. Amen. We continue worship by singing our hymn of the day, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, number 858.
Please stand as you are able while we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. God of wonder, in the richness of life, we ask that you cultivate humility in your church. In gatherings of every size, may we learn to boast only in the cross. Shape your church to be people of kindness, generosity, and justice. God of grace. Creator God, as we continue into the deep winter months, may we find wisdom in the earth. May we find cycles of rest, peace, and stillness. May we become healers of the earth and stewards of creation. God of grace. Gracious God, we pray for the world, for countries at war, for unjust systems and hurtful actions. We ask for your justice. We cry out for your love. May all people be treated with respect, dignity, and care. God of grace. Holy God, be with all people who are struggling this new year, for all who are grieving and hurting, for those struggling financially, the homeless, the weary, and the lost. Provide them resources, hope, and a path to live life fully. God of grace. Mothering God, free us from all that binds us. Transform our hearts, minds, and spirits. May we live into the fullness of life you have called for us in the midst of all that is heavy around us. God of grace. Yeah. Healing God, we pray for all who are sick or injured, for those with COVID, RSV, and the flu. We pray for those who struggle with mental health and seasonal depression. Meet each person with healing, love, and hope. Today we especially pray for Shelley Kufal, Dwayne Askew, Dorothy Westfall, Rose Rosenow, Terry Kickbush, Brad Campbell, Lee Sillers, Rich Sillers, Barb Shire, Rita Redant, Armand Linsmeyer, Maynard Matthew, Jill Kors, Chevy Teske, John Rocco, Annie Ormont, Jim Klinger, Peggy Orvez, Carol and Don Prochnow, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. God of grace. Nurturing God, abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for all of the members of St. John and all who come through our doors. We lift up this week's prayer ministry. Jesse Redant, Jeremy Tesh, Heather Gallenberg, Bobby Hansen, James Haroldson, Scott Astrike, Easton Elke, Jill Kors, Riley Levake, and Rita Utek. God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us, we offer these prayers in the silent prayers of our hearts. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you all to share the peace however you feel comfortable.
Remembering all of God's gifts to us, let us offer ourselves and our gifts in humble service that all may see the goodness of God as we continue with our offering. Please stand as you are able while we sing, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for your generosity. We give thanks for the generosity of others. Bless these gifts. May these gifts be used in a way that cultivate compassion and love through our ministry. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray how Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll have continuous communion today. All are welcome as this is the Lord's table. There is hand sanitizer in the pew for you at your convenience, and there are also gluten-free wafers available upon request. Gather here at Christ's table so that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Receive the body of Christ and be transformed. Embrace this sacred space and know you are loved. Amen. I invite the communion assistants forward.
Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children, and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Some announcements before we end. Next Sunday, February 4th, at 10 a.m. after worship is our annual meeting, so we would like as many people to come to that as possible. There are our programs for the annual reports are in the narthex so you can take one we ask that you do take one per family and the cemetery associate association will meet after our annual meeting next week sunday tuesday february 6th at 6 30 the adult study will meet to continue our discussion on the gospel of mark and are there any other announcements and please stand as you are able to receive the blessing May the peace of God be in your heart. May the grace of God be in your words. May the love of God be in your hands. May the joy of God be in your soul and in the song that your life sings. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn, When Peace Like a River, number 785.
peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Thank you. For